Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday morning. Darren Saul here, your host of Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast. I hope everybody's doing really well out there, keeping away and keeping dry. Um, I've got a fantastic show for you today. It's episode 48. We're growing. And I have Anthony Pham in the studio. And we're going to be chatting about what they don't teach you at school about life. So I'm very interested to hear what Anthony has to say about this. So for everybody out there, who is Anthony? Anthony is young, passionate, and professional. He currently resides in sunny Queensland and works for American Express as a business development manager. He loves serving and creating great outcomes for clients. Anthony has led a very interesting life journey and is going to share his thoughts and philosophies with us today about living, with your, living your life with humility, awareness, and keeping your eyes open for opportunities. So good morning, Anthony. How are you doing? Hey, good, thanks. I don't know if it's been that sunny recently, but uh, nonetheless, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> sunny thank Queensland. You again for having me on the show. Yeah, yeah, usually sunny. I guess it's nice <laughs> being sunny. Absolutely. I mean, we all have to have a few funny days, as long as the majority is okay. That's the main thing. That's right. Keeps things in perspective. Like Absolutely, mate. So now, Anthony, tell us a bit about you and, you know, your life's journey and, you know, just love to hear a bit more about what you've been up to. Yeah, well, I guess, like you said, I'm working at American Express at the moment. Um, and it's interesting, you know, when I was at uni, everyone talks about working for the big four and Fortune 500 companies. And that was really never on my mind. Uh, Actually, let me jump in. What did you study yeah. in uni? I studied business management. Major business in management. Marketing. Fantastic. Yeah, the uh, University of Queensland. So, Great. Um, yeah, it's interesting that I sort of found myself in, in, in quite a desirable role, working for a great company, global company. Yeah. Um, it's sort of just fell into that space, um, if I'm being honest. Um, and it, it's interesting. It's interesting how, I guess, sometimes you don't end up where you think you so. Yeah, and then, um, like you said before, I've got a few other things um, going on the side. I did speak last time too about a little basketball clinic that I have going as well. Um, yeah. Sure basketball and grassroots community. I think it's something... Uh, that's lacking a bit up here. We don't have that many coaches. Um, so, it's, yeah, okay. it's always good to, to bring a smile to kids' faces. Fantastic. Tell us more about the basketball clinic. How did you get into basketball? How did you decide to open up a basketball clinic? And what's the yeah. message, you know, behind you building this? What do you want to do with it? I think for me, uh, the problem I saw was that the best coaches are coaching the best teams. Um, and myself, I was involved a lot in state and rep basketball. Wow. And those kids, they're pretty good and they're getting better. But I saw a lot of kids who, starting out in the game, they didn't have that support. They're relying on you know, volunteers and mums and dads. And we, we definitely need that. But um, there's a lack of, a, I guess, presence of, of real quality coaches, real experienced coaches in that community space. Okay, wow. And is it, is it easy to become a basketball coach? Do you have to have a very strong basketball background or can you just start coaching? How does it work? You can start coaching. Um, there's uh, pathways into it. They've got a five-level certification. Um, so you start with level one, which is a community okay. coaching course. And a lot of clubs out there will, will take volunteers and, and would train you up usually. Um, it's helpful if you've played and appreciate the game. But for me, I think that's, especially when you're dealing with young kids, it's a very small aspect of it. Um, it's right. about keeping them engaged, keeping them energized. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's different skill sets for different sort different of levels. Skills. And and what do you want to teach your kids apart from just these skills? You know, the physical skills and the basketball skills. Yeah. Do you have any you know life skills or any uh, philosophies that you want to try and instill in your kids as a coach? Yeah, hundred percent. That's a very good question. I think for me, that's what sets me apart from a lot of other coaches. Like, I love the technical aspect. Um, and that's really important to be successful. But on top of that, you know, it's, it's, it's like anything mindset is key. Your mindset is not in the right space. Um, you're not going to get anywhere. You can't achieve if you don't believe. And I really believe in that. And it's really, I guess, amazing to see kids who come in and there's things they think they can't do and, and just the way they speak and every drill is a pain because they're complaining. I can't do this, can't do this. And the transformation... Um, you know, in, in, in a short time, sometimes it's incredible. Wow. And obviously it helps with their confidence, you know, and something like that can really help them in their whole life. hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, and that's a feedback that I've gotten. Kids come to me after 
you know, three, four, five years, especially they transition into high school or uni and there's that big change. Um, it's, it's really nice to know that that stays with them and that's a part of them. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I'd always, lo- I'd always had loved to be a, a coach in some kind of sporting, but I've never was good, was good enough. <laughs> um, that's, that's, see, that's an excuse there. There's that. <laughs> we need more coaches. We need, it's not about that. So I think, uh, you know, if you like kids and you like uh, bringing a smile to their face, and you can teach them a few things. Because um, you become that trusted advisor. I think that's the key gotcha. thing. Yep. Growing up, um, you know, it's always really important to have a role model. So I think if you yep. can play that part, um, that's amazing. Absolutely. It's very rewarding for you as well. Um, you know, it's something that would be lovely and enriching for your soul, helping mm-hmm. these kids and seeing their journey as they grow from when they started to where they might leave you or you might still in, stay in contact with them after their basketball journey. Right. So that's what, what a lovely thing to do. Well done. That's all right. <laughs> well done, mate. And so tell us more about your journey in life in, and business to how you became what you, you know, business development manager at American Express and, you know, what you're doing at the moment and what, you know, what you, what your passion is really. Okay. Uh, well, I guess I've always worked. Uh, so from the young age, I think 18, as soon as I left high school, started working. Yep. Uh, grinded my gears in hospitality. So I was a bartender actually. So oh, for, about, yeah. um, uh, for about four years of my life, I slept at 6am. So I was nocturnal. Wow. <laughs> it was tough and I didn't have a car. Uh, for a few of those years, so it's just catching the uh, the night bus with drunken people. So <laughs> every night is uh, you're risking your life. So Definitely. I like and to compare what I did to to what people do on the uh, on the front line. But uh, yeah. so yes, yeah, so that's where I sort of learn to appreciate customer service and learn a bit about business. Um, you know what it takes, and I think that's where I developed that really keen interest, and I knew, you know, that. Um, I wanted to create something for myself, which yep. is why I created the uh, Basketball Academy. Lovely. It gives me a bit of freedom. Lovely. Yeah. And I mean, then, working, working in a bar, I mean, can tell hmm. you, can teach you a hell of a lot about human beings yeah. and how to interact with people. And yeah. you can learn a lot working in a bar. Yeah, you see the good and bad in people. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I guess after that, uh, I was in recruiting for about three years. Oh, so really? Yeah, I did skill migration. I did see okay. as well that uh, recruitment. So I really enjoyed that. Um, really enjoyed that. I uh, learned a lot. Uh, I think my mentor, my, my former boss, we just hit it off. And, you know, they say when you're picking a job, it's about picking your, your, your manager or your employee, old employer, I should say. Yep. I think that's the key, um, especially early on in your career. Yep. It matters so much more than the degree of what you're doing to have someone actually sort of care about you and care about your growth and want you to succeed is yeah i think so i was really lucky to have that kind of relationship learned a lot um awesome. but ultimately wanted to see what else was out there and continue to learn and grow and then and then you went into working for um amex is that right uh no so before that there was a short stint i worked for employee shore Oh, yeah. um, for a little bit, about six months. So, employee sure they're basically a HR solutions provider. I'm not sure. Gotcha. They've been in the, the media quite a lot recently. Um, so, basically, the guy who started employee sure saw that the the court system was a little bit a little bit unfair towards employers. So, something like an unfair dismissal claim sometimes it costs more to challenge it than to actually pay it and he saw a big problem in that and basically they moved to a subscription style uh, yeah. service. Yeah. 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 So imagine that. Imagine paying, you know, 12 grand to save yourself 10 grand. Makes no sense. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's something had to be done. So I was there for a little bit um, and I guess uh, there was a role that I was wanting to, to go into, get out and field on BDM like I'm doing now. Yep. Um, but I think company wise, few things internally happened um it didn't pan out and so i moved on luckily um you know everything happens for a reason and that's why i'm here now so absolutely and so then tell us a bit more about exactly what you're doing right now okay so amex basically um as you know they're credit card providers um not one of the best credit cards available in the market and so my job is to talk to merchants and get them to accept it as a form of payment correct right? yep. Yep. Um, i'm responsible for the brisbane area so basically, 
look after a certain area, go out in the field, have honest conversation with business owners to see, you know, if there's anything we can do to help them, um, I guess, with their business. Because a lot of people don't understand. You don't know what you don't know, right? And you yeah. don't know, um, you know, potentially what you're missing out for and, and what it can do. Because a lot has changed in terms of the actual product and service itself in the few, yeah. last few years. And that's actually a really good point. Because, I mean, I've always thought that... Um, I used to have Amex and then I stopped using Amex, but I always thought that Amex would charge the vendors and the merchants a slightly higher percentage. So people were tending to not use Amex. Is that still right? Or how does it work? Uh, so in the past, I think we were probably three times more expensive. Oh, wow. um, uh, and going back, American Express has been around for, you know, 150 years, yeah. 1850 started. So it's got a long history. And I think there was a time where we, as a company philosophy, focus on exclusivity right uh, so back in the 1980s it's a huge thing where basically mastercard come to you and said only use mastercard we give you great rates and then everyone started doing it. i'm not saying mastercard started it I'm just saying uh-huh. that started. <laughs> uh, legal disclaimer but um, that's, that's sort of what happened and that's sort of what the space was um and i guess yeah, we, our prices used to be a little bit more expensive, um, but since then we've, we've adjusted, so it's a bit more competitive. Um, oh, good. More fair. That's yeah. good to know. And it's more education around what that part is, yeah. Right, that's great to know. Good to know, because I never knew that. I mean, I always thought that that was the case. Yeah. It's definitely happen. not the case anymore. You'll find that it's pretty much even, if it's not even cheaper sometimes. Yeah, and the whole world of um, finance and cards and different payment solutions is changing anyway. We've got so many different products now. It's not like, not as simple as it used to be. There's so many different mm. options these days. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And so tell us, I mean, you've done lots of different things. When you first started and you were thinking about what you were going to do in life, what, what did you think you were going to do and what did your family think you were going to do? And how is that different to what you actually started doing? It's a good question. Um, I actually, when I first left high school, I wanted to be a psychologist. Psychologist, okay. And I think I wanted to be a psychologist. And really... It's going to sound really stupid, but there were basically, there was basically <laughs> two people in my life who were yep. affected by, I guess, uh, one of my cousins had cerebral palsy right. and growing up, he was the same age. And it wasn't really something we talked about and we just knew he was sort of different. Yep. And I just thought, as a young kid, I just thought, you know, we'd be best friends. Right. You know, if things were slightly different. And I thought, I, I, did, I don't know, I thought there was a way we could sort of help him and, and you know, um, I wanted to get into that sort of space. Uh, Beautiful. And then one of my, I guess, one of my uh, uncles um, had Parkinson's and it's still an area where we don't really know too much. Uh, don't really know. It's currently listed as an incurable. Uh, and so yeah. I thought, you know, maybe I could do something about that. <laughs> so I uh, did a year of psychology. Um, okay, it wasn't, wow. for me. wasn't for me. Yep. Uh, too many big words for me. <laughs> yeah, it's quite sciencey and That's quite true. analytical in the first year as well, I heard. Yes, it is now. So, uh, but I guess that, that desire to help and that desire to do something uh, yeah. always stay with me. And so that's one of my sort of non-negotiables. Okay. In anything I do. Okay. And was your family supportive of all your choices or did they try and sway you in a different direction at times? Um, I think they sort of let me do my own thing. Um, it's more, they're more concerned that I'm chopping and changing and, but I think that's what you have to do in life sometimes, you know, it yep. doesn't always come smack bangs you in the face. Um, but they were always there in terms of support if, if I needed anything. Um, it, it's just hard because, um, I uh, probably should have said this earlier, but my parents were both refugees. So, um, coming here, I didn't have. I couldn't just look at, you know, my mom or dad's career path to follow what they did and yeah. an idea of professionally what they would recommend doing. Um, they yeah, were yeah. self-employed into small business. So it was very different um, when I entered that professional stage of my life. Wow. And so then looking back at your journey, um, yes. what lessons have you learned and what do you think that you've learned that you've learned on your own outside of school? What are the things that they don't teach you? I think a lot of it, honestly, I'd say at least 80%. Um, it's just life experience. And I think when I left high school, I really valued, you know, the formal education system. And it's there for a reason. It's there for a reason. Yep. But in terms of the growth that I needed as a person, um, 
you know, like take sales, for instance, just overcoming objection, getting yeah. to talk to people, um, into, you know, personal skills. Um, they don't teach you that in school. So, yeah. yeah. That's and right. I think, all, the, uh, all the softer yeah. side, the, a lot of yeah, the EQ exactly. side. Exactly. And, that, and that's the things that employers are looking for these days, you know. Um, so there needs to be there needs to be a balance, and I'm lucky because I guess in my culture sometimes there's a really big focus on on the academic side. Yeah. Um, but my parents weren't too too fussed about that. They sort of um, yeah, let me sort of go my own way, forge my own path in a sense. Oh, that's that's really great. That's that's amazing. It's nice to have that support from your family. You know, when you're doing something slightly different, maybe to what they had envisioned for you. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. And it, and it helps you along the way. And it's really great that you've obviously you've got this sense of empathy and strong EQ to give back and to help other people. And that's probably what's also influenced you to set up your basketball clinic. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Big motivation. I think, I think it started because one kid just asked me at the park to teach him and yep. then he oh, really? asked his pen and then sooner or later I had 20 kids just messaging me asking if I was free that day and I thought I gotta I gotta start charging some money for this because <laughs> it's taking too much of my time I don't even know who these kids are so <laughs> yeah. and so what's happening with that right now in this period obviously nothing yeah good question so um I've just had a look the other day uh it looks like we'll be opening up in stage three okay. um just because right now I'm using a school hall um for training purposes and they're still a little, little bit uncertain uh, right. just sort of easy enough to hire it in these times from their perspective so okay. it looks like i believe july the 12th uh, i'll be looking to to reopen um potentially you know they they change the dates earlier but we need to be out there doing stuff you know i think uh, from a from a health and exercise perspective because i can't remember the last time i sh shot a basketball so i'm not really <laughs> i don't really feel uh, equipped to teach right now i'm gonna yeah. maybe delay it a month and teach myself first uh -huh. just actually out, out of interest for all the basketball fans out there what position did you play when you played i was a point guard a point, point guard, guard. okay uh, for those who don't know you basically uh bring up the ball um you know control the team in terms of traffic and tempo um and these days if you watch uh nba or any uh you know top leagues it's usually the point guard who's it's very dominant in terms of scoring. Right. Okay. Wow. So you, a little bit. Strategies. No, I wasn't much of a scorer. I was more of a defender, passer. Okay. Uh, but I guess, yeah, everyone adapts a little bit. Okay. So is the, point, is, is the point guard a bit like a quarterback in football? Yeah, in a sense. In a sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you kind of like you, you control the strategy and the tempo and you know, right. you're, you're, you're kind of the one that pulls the strings, but you don't always have yeah. to be the one that scores. That's right. So, I mean, to give you an idea, uh, there's five players on the court on your team. Yep. Um, and usually the point guard will have the ball sort of 30, 35% of the time. Oh, wow. So okay. they'll, they'll have the ball in their hands, um, you know, doing things with it. Fantastic. Oh, Anthony, well done. And so what has basketball taught you about life, actually? I think basketball is a great sport. I think that's why I promote it as much as I do. Um, it's really inclusive. You know, like I said, there's only five on the court, ten in a team, so everyone has an opportunity. Um, and there's really, there's really nowhere to hide because the difference between five on five and four on four is immense. You yeah. know, where I think if you if you watch, uh, I'm a big sport fan myself, so you, you know, oftentimes let's say rugby league, for instance, you can just hide someone that's a poor defender. Yeah, you know, like typically your halfback's a bit smaller, um, and so you can hide them, and, and you can sort of get away with that. But yeah. in in basketball, if you can't defend or hold your own, um, any any I guess what I'm trying to say is anything you can't do in terms of the skill shortage is yep. it's very noticeable. It's it very noticeable. Easy. Yeah, actually, that's a really interesting point. I just recently watched a film with Ben Affleck, okay. starring Ben Affleck, okay. and he yeah. was a star as a basketball coach. Okay. And he was brought to teach this team to coach this team yeah. that was pretty much inferior physically and even from a skills point of view with most of yeah. the players compared yes. to a lot of the others in the league. I think it was the high school league, yes. but he went, he was a really good player himself at the certain school and he mm. was a, he's a fantastic coach and he basically slowly, slowly brings their skill level up where they actually win the championship so many years in a row. That's awesome. And awesome. one of the things that he was teaching was that, and something that's stuck in my head because it's very relevant to life and business mm. is 
all those little things, if you just do them well, they yeah. add up to so many um, points at the end of the game. Mm. So every little micro win can really give you huge results when you add them up, even though while you're doing them, you might not think they're very important. So that's a really, really good right. analogy for life and yeah. business. Is doing everything you know? really well along the way. Mm, 100%. I think there's so many parallels between sport and business. Um, you know, one of the things I always promote to my kids is that the winning starts in training yeah. and, and then you, you only collect the trophy um, in the game or in, in the finals. Yeah. Uh, so exactly. I think installing that sort of process uh, mentality in kids and, and showing them that there's actually a very strong correlation between what you do um, in terms of training and, and preparation Yep. Um, the outcomes. Awesome. And then your, your kids, uh, you're teaching them ba basketball as well. You want to, you know, turn them into basketball stars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I had some good results, uh, with kids that you know, everyone has different goals and things they want to achieve. Um, sure. so it's, it's just nice to see them have a, have a smile on their face. Yeah. That's actually a good point. I mean, only if they want to become basketball stars, they might not want to do that. hundred percent. You know, yeah. and I think that's, um, it's, that's an important thing to bring up. You know, a lot of parents sort of, like you said before, force things on their kids. Yeah. Um, and it, it can sometimes have the opposite result. So yeah. I'm very careful of, of making sure it's not my goal. Um, I, I'll tell them if I see a certain potential thing they can achieve. Great. But ultimately, it has to come from them. Very, very wise. Very, very wise advice, Andy. <laughs> I like that. You know, and you can use, you know, basketball and everything else that they do as learning experience to mold their character mm. for later on in life doesn't mean they have to become basketball stars. They're just, you're exactly. just using it as a vehicle for teaching life's lessons. Yeah. hundred percent. That's great. And so what's on the uh, future for Anthony fam? What do you want to do now? Any, any particular plans, any, any different tangents that you want to go on in your life? Uh, I don't know about plans, but I, I am planning to move to Melbourne to okay. start in next year. Um, it's something yeah. I've wanted to do for a while. I was born in Melbourne and, been, been waiting for the, I guess, the right time to go back. Um, yep. And I thought, you know, forget about that. I'll just go. <laughs> so I think uh, this is something that appeals to me about, um, you know, living down there. I've got a lot of family down there. Yeah. Uh, it's a bigger city. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping it'll be good for me. I love Melbourne. So I've got lots of family and friends there and I go there a lot. And I just yeah. love it down there. It's, it's so exciting. Yeah. It's very cosmopolitan. What took you to um, Queensland in the first place? Uh, we moved here in 04. Uh, my little brother actually had some breathing difficulties. Oh. Um, it was quite cold down there back then. He had some asthma and oh, okay, so. it was up three days a week or whatever. I thought, you know, it'll be better for him in yeah. a stable climate. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Weather's so much better over there. Yeah. I, have, I have much resentment towards it. So, <laughs> oh, that's great. Man. He's actually just moved back uh, at the start of Feb. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. So, Anthony, what would you like to leave the audience with in terms of, you know, anything that you've learned and anything that you can, you know, instill in people from your time as a basketball coach? What do you think would help people in their journey these days? I think it's just about being open to change and always looking to improve. Um, you know, it's the common theme that I've found, you know, especially nine to five, Monday to Friday, I'm out there talking to small business owners and it seems like sometimes they're content. Um, and I understand as a small business owner, you've got many hats to wear and a lot of things to deal with. Um, but I think it's about really trying to think about what's going to help your business and setting time for that to happen. I think COVID, one of the silver linings is it's given people time to really dig deep about what's going on because, you know, otherwise time just passes by and you're not really sure where you are anymore. You know, I think it's about really deliberate action. Yeah. I'm not sure if you, something, <laughs> something uh, you, you've done yourself Darren, recently. Yeah, this time. I certainly would agree. You know, it's COVID has been a great um, reset in a way. And it's made us reevaluate what we really want and how we yeah. want to go about it and take stock of some of the things in, in our world that we really didn't need. And, you know, so it's really been a great reset for many, many reasons. And as long as everybody's healthy and happy, then, you know, I think it's, it's been an interesting period and we've all learned something from it. Yeah. 
I think one of those things as well um, is just about being passionate about what you do and you know, we're in business to create something for ourselves yep. in terms of a lifestyle or an outcome for, for ourselves and our family. And I think if that desire is not there anymore, people can feel it. If yep. you can see it when you interact with them, Definitely. Um, your customers and employees, I think it's, it's really important to be aligned um, and trying to do something that you, you love. Yep, definitely. Because people can sense it. They can perceive it yeah, subconsciously yeah. straight away if you're not really enjoying what you're doing or you don't really want to be there. That's right. And that's, that's not going right. to help you make any sales. 100%. So I think that's the yeah. main sort of tip to, to small businesses. Um, and yeah, just being open to change. You know, I'm, I'm involved a lot with the startup space. I was really interested to see what people are doing. And things are changing. Things are changing really quickly. And so I think um, it's really important to try to stay up to date with that. Just things like automations in your business, you know, um, just really looking at things you can do and, and leveraging other things so that you have time. You know, it's about creating time for yourself. Definitely. Uh, time Definitely. Is really, so. yeah, everybody's always finding, trying to find ways to get more time. That's, we're all struggling for time. Uh, for, uh, more and more these days. Absolutely. Common thing. Uh, not anymore. I've got a lot of time now. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, sooner or later, we're going to have to go back to, uh, to real life. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. You've been an absolute pleasure to talk to, and I've learned so much about your past, and you know, you've got some really great insights to share, both in your, from your life's journey as well as your journey as a basketball coach and what you've learned teaching and coaching young people. Um, young people. So really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing everything with the audience. Appreciate you having me. Uh, thank you, mate. And I'll be back in 25 years to give you some uh, proper life advice. All right, we're going to do, we're going to do a part two in 25 years. I'm going to hold you to it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put right. it in the diary. That's all right. Set the date. <laughs> all right. Bye. So Anthony, thank you so much. And for all the audience out there, I hope you've learned a lot from Anthony and from our discussion and uh, have a great day. And we'll see you very, very soon for another episode. So bye for now.